Hello, you're on Public Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new episode on this series on GitOps with Atlantis. And on this episode, I will be configuring Teragrant on my local instance of Atlantis. And so if this series and the content of this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning by doing. So let's start coding. On the first episode on this series, which you can access right here, we started our GitOps journey with Atlantis by setting up an instance of Atlantis on my local machine. This setup is configured to run the default Terraform commands. And because most of my Terraform infrastructure code have been set up to run Teragrant, I am going to integrate this with my local Atlantis. I already have Teragrant set up on my local machine, which I have installed using ASDF. But what I need to do is set up the necessary settings to tell Atlantis to use Teragram. And so on my Atlantis repository, which is what I have on my VS Code session at the moment, I will open repos.yaml file located at the root of the repository. I'm going to add a new workflow and call it Teragram. Like what I did for the POC workflow, I will override both plan and apply. So let's start setting up the plan override parameters. The first step that I will run is going to set up the TF workspace environment variable. And then instead of using the built-in Atlantis steps like init and plan, I will use a property called run and set up what I want to execute. So what I'm essentially doing with this run property is that I'm running Teragrant plan. And now let's set up the overrides for the apply. And I'm going to start adding the steps that I want to run inside my override, starting with setting up the environment variable for TF workspace. And then I'm also going to add a run property to execute my Teragrant apply command. What I need to do next is update the setup to consume this new workflow. And so back to my VS Code Explorer and on my Atlantis.yaml file, instead of creating a new project, I will replace the workflow property inside the existing POC project. I will change the workflow property from POC to Teragram. And this will tell Atlantis to use the new Teragram workflow that I've set up inside the repos.yaml. Keep in mind that I'm not changing the project name. And so when I run my Atlantis commands, I will still need to reference the same POC project. I'm now ready to give this a test. So let me head to my VS Code terminal. And I will start my ng-rock session. This has generated a new forwarding endpoint. So what I need to do is copy this forwarding URL on the console and update the webhook payload URL on my infrastructure code repository in GitHub. So let me switch to my browser. This is my AWS single sign-on repository that I have integrated with Atlantis. So I'll head to the settings tab and then go to webhooks and click edit on the existing Atlantis webhook and update the payload URL. Remember to keep the slash events at the end of the URL to make sure that this will work. And then scroll all the way down this page and click update webhook. And now back to my VS Code session. I'm going to let my ngrock instance running. So I'm going to open a new terminal session. Initialize my AWS credentials by running AWS Bolt. Before I start running my local instance of Atlantis, I need to make some adjustments to my Atlantis configuration file. So let me head to my VS Code Explorer and open my Atlantis.var file. I also need to update the URL variable in this file to point to the running instance of my ngrock. And then back to my VS Code terminal, I can then start my local Atlantis instance. And now, I'm going to switch to a different VS Code session that contains my AWS single sign-on infrastructure code repository. So what I'm going to do is head to my VS Code terminal, and then I'm going to create a new branch for my changes. And back to my VS Code Explorer, I will open my Teragrant configuration file and reinstate the contents of this file. And on my VS Code terminal, I will commit my changes and push my changes to my remote repository. And then I'll switch to my browser and raise a pull request for my changes. And like we saw last time, 
GitHub triggers automated processes as part of the checks. This is GitHub talking to my Atlantis local instance to start running the plan job. The step has completed and what you will notice is a new comment added to the pull request automatically. This comment provides information about the output of the run. So if I expand this section right here, it shows the results of the run. It also shows different options on what to run next. I'm going to apply this infrastructure by going to the comment section at the bottom of this pull request. And I'm going to add this comment to start applying the infrastructure. This creates a new set of steps under the checks that correspond to the apply step. The apply step is complete and the steps in the checks show green checks, which is an indication that it was completed successfully. A new comment has also been added automatically into the pull request, which also contains the output of the run. And that's all I have for today. On the next episode, I'm going to look into setting up my Atlantis instance using Docker containers. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.